<laughs> what do you think happens to all like those dopey lean rappers like Little Xan now that they are no longer relevant? I mean, you know, the, think about the career of a rapper. You basically like you come out, you have this big explosion of interest where everybody wants to look at you and talk about you, and you're you're very much like this little freak show. And there's there's a lot of different levels to it where like some people just seem like regular guys, and they're kind of like it's easier for people to like understand that their value is in the music mm-hmm. versus like a lot of the SoundCloud rappers, the value is more in the meme. Right. And it's like as a rapper, it's your job to like capitalize on that moment and then also try to like build something long term that you can monetize, right? And when you look at somebody like Lil Xan, he's definitely an example of somebody who basically just torched his you know, ability to really do his thing during that time period by not taking the opportunity serious. But then also it's like, you know, what can you do with your fame in the long run? Because it's like there's a lot of different ways to make money off rap and everything. And with Lil Xan, it's like I think he's a charming enough guy that I think if he got sober, he could be f- successful doing any number of things. I think he could be a YouTuber or a streamer. I think he could probably make a decent run at being popular musically again if he were to really take that serious. I think that, you know, it's just like a lot of things that I could kind of imagine somebody like him doing because he's famous as fuck. He is likable when he's in a relatively sober state. But, you know, is he going to take his life seriously enough to even pursue any of these, like, hypothetical opportunities? I mean, he hasn't really shown that to me for sure. And, you know, like, people like Lil Pump, like, he recently did an interview, um, and he, he hates me now. He's mad at me or whatever because I guess I said something on the podcast that made it sound like I thought he fell off or whatever, which, you know, sorry. It's hard not to acknowledge reality sometimes. But, you know, and uh, he basically, like, went and did an interview with Bootleg Kev the other day and – uh you know, it just doesn't really seem like he's even accepted that his career has had like a downturn. And it seems like he kind of, there's no sign that he's like going to change anything. Because I, I, I think musically, all of these guys, Lil Pump, Lil Zan, whatever, if they really were to put their fucking nose to the grindstone and make music that was interesting to people, I think that they could have success. Yeah. They just have to actually really take that serious. And you can't just keep making the same shit. No. No, and you know, oftentimes people come out with their first stuff and then it's their best stuff. And then afterwards they go through that sophomore slump that everyone yeah. talks about. But it's because it's an evolution that needs to happen. You know what I mean? A kid dancing at 13 is absolutely adorable or 10, whatever. And then that same kid trying to do the same dance at 18, 19 doesn't elicit the same reaction. All oh, of a yeah. sudden you lose that cute factor, that kind of initial factor. Yeah. You know, people expect evolution. They expect some measure of change or some kind of growth or you need to show some depth. Can't listen to you make the same fucking record for 30 right. years, you know? And, so. and, and they, people want to see growth. And it's like, even, you know, you'll, you'll forever click on a girl's TikTok and she'll have 2 million followers and, like, you know, she'll have a couple of videos, a couple million views, and then she'll have, like, you know, every other current video is, like, 5,000 views, 10,000 views, because it's like, yeah, if it doesn't matter how pretty you are, if you just keep churning out the same fucking totally soulless content, then people are going to lose interest and stop watching. Same thing with YouTubers, same thing with all these rappers, and it's like, they have the fame part down, it's just, it's, it's kind of depressing that now it's all about the music. Yeah. All about the music. You should, you should, if I was any of those guys, I would, like, live in the studio i would make myself a student of music i would listen to music from the 70s and 80s and try different shit like you just have to do like the only thing that's gonna bring lil xan back is if lil xan makes a fucking album or a song that changes shit and that is different i highly doubt they were working that hard before they got the music so i (laughs) doubt they're gonna work all of a sudden much harder after they get some comfort and they get some money especially once they feel like no matter what they make, nobody's going to listen to it because yeah. the fan base just isn't there. And and rap is just addicted to new shit. It's like they want to see new it rappers. Depends. It depends. I think some people elicit a loyal fan base yeah, yeah. and it becomes timeless, but those are few and far between. You have to build a masterful career if you want to have the yeah, kind of fan base absolutely. that'll sit on their hands for five years while you don't put an album out like Kendrick, you know? That's, That's just awesome. like... That it's incredible, but it's like it's the thing that like almost no rappers are able to do. And even rappers who are really popular, like somebody like Roddy Rich goes away for like a year and then drops an album that people think is kind of mid, and it's like th- his stock plummets in in regards he to how people it. talk about him. He hasn't earned it. He, 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 hasn't he, earned he it. thought he was Kendrick, yeah. I mean, you don't have to even be Kendrick. There's people on a smaller scale who retain their fan base even over the years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty confident that like Take Immortal Technique, if he came out with a new album at some point, a lot of his old fan base will jump on all over that because he's 
he's he's earned that from them because he has a diehard fan base in the same way that a Danny Brown has a a diehard fan base in the same way that a currency has that but they've worked for it they've the 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 highs of their career realistically have not been that high but they've managed to like have this real ass fan base that'll support them long term and that's the thing that a lot of these SoundCloud rappers 100% did did not do is that they just lost the connection with their community which understandably because a lot of those people just straight up move on you know like their favorite rapper when they were 14 is just not their favorite rapper four years later whereas your favorite rapper when you're 20 might actually be one of your favorite rappers when you're 30 like when you're 18 19 20 that era of your fandom is tends to be the part that gets crystallized long term you know have you ever interviewed somebody (coughs) who made it big and then lost kind of everything afterwards and now is like working a regular life all the time yeah really oh yeah you've interviewed that person i mean it's like a different version of it, but like Rich Homie Quan, I interviewed like two days ago, and he, you know, was in this group with Young Thug, was like signed to his label, was like had huge songs, and then him and Young Thug basically fall out, no communication, they don't fuck with each other at all anymore, and then around the same time, his career got kind of stalled out because he was in this bad label deal, he's trying to get out of the label deal, so he can't drop music for like two, three years, yeah. and it's like... He was telling me the other day, it was pretty sad. He's like talking about how his 14 year old son said to him, Damn, dad, like they were saying that you used to be the man. Like, like, that sounds you, like a rap lyric. I know, but it's like, and, used and to I, be the man. but I could imagine. Yeah, yeah, he was the man. And uh, I don't know. That was like, and you know, he's still. It sounds it sounds like his money situation is still pretty good. Like he's not really hurting in that regard because he's had That's some so sad, bro. Yeah, but he doesn't have like the fame or the or the like, you know, level of that he wanted to be at or and you know, he's but now he's independent and he's just it's about the music. Can he make a fucking hit song that'll yeah. change shit for him? Like his I listened to his new album, it's dope as fuck. Think about how sad that is. He can provide a good life to his family and his son's like you still fell off. Mm. That's a wild thing. That's a blow and a half. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you first start just because you want to get out of the hood. <coughs> then you get out of the hood. Maybe you can't do the mansion and everything, mm. but you get out. Right. And to a lot of people, you're still a failure. That's sad. That's rap. Yo, we just hit 400,000 subscribers right here on the Clips channel. So if you want to help us out, click subscribe. Get us to 500K. Yeah.